I'm first. Sheila McMath. I'm um, Michael Jacob Ambedian. We're building two earthworks that are inspired by Andy Goldsworthy and by Niels Udo, who are well-known earthwork artists. And we're exploring the idea of making those earthworks as close as possible to the original in a different environment, in a different time. It's called, it's called Imitate because we um, based it on a quote from Bruce Mal. It was a piece of literature in art school. Uh, in art school, we're, we're uh, introduced to this piece by Bruce Mal, the designer, who had uh, uh, this incomplete manifesto for growth. And he had what, suggestions about creativity. And, and it was like, yeah. like something that inspired artists and, and keep them, kept them grounded. And one of the lines in, in this uh, manifesto was imitate, try to come as close as you can the differences still might be truly rem remarkable. With that, we started thinking about artists that we might be interested in imitating. And hence, we came across Andy Goldsworthy and Nils Udo. The similarities of their working methods and their work... It was startling. Was it was startling. It was... So, so there was kind of this lineage that seems like one was feeding the other. And there was a bit of an imitation happening already, sure. so we decided to explore that further. Yeah. It's been challenging to try to imitate the works of Goldsworthy and Udo. And we've been saying several times that even though there's a template in place, there's certain things that we understand about how the work's going to develop. We still are feeling like there is a great learning curve in terms of problem solving, and we still feel really creative as we're doing it. We're dealing with a different environment, different materials because of that. It, it forces you to like alter your, your approach a little bit. It's, and with the intent of still trying to come as close as you can. This area that's, that we were installing these works is a conservation area, a rare conservation, which is a wildlife research area, which is another kind of segue into uh, survive and resist. We have different stipulations than the other artists had to, had yeah. to work with. We've been only allowed to collect fallen branches that don't disturb habitat, but yeah. Andy Goldsworthy was able to take, I think, whatever he wanted. <laughs> and the, likely the branches were more flexible, more malleable. These are more challenging, for sure. The lengths and sizes vary, so we've had to deal with that. We've also had to be respectful of, of, of the conservation area itself. We've so. learned about salamander habitats and how to maintain them. We've, <laughs> we've learned all kinds of things. In terms of the theme of survive resist, we felt that this was a perfect place to extend the reach of Kafka, right? To force people to come to a conservation area that is basically devoted to resisting the loss of species, right? To maintaining some kind of hope that we can have some kind of ecological recovery. I, I see it fitting in in that way. And I just, as soon as I heard the theme survive, resist, I thought sort of survive as an artist, right? Survive as a person, survive as a hopefully hopeful person and, and sort of resist cynicism is what I thought. Those, those, those were the ways that I put survive resist together in my head. So. Especially in this age, in the political climate, the, the, in, in terms of the arts, most institutions that feel very threatened right now um, because of the change in, in politics. It's kind of poignant that it's done right now. Yeah, and the other thing too about working in this environment is that we've met people that we would have never ever met before who have amazing aesthetic sensitivity, right? Sure. You're, they're not artists necessarily, but they're so attuned to their environment that the details of, of things are, are not lost by them. So they're, they're, just, they're just really interested in the details of how we're building, how we're collecting, how we're inhabiting the environment um, in, a, in a different way. And it's been really cool to be working here and come across people who normally wouldn't see a contemporary art piece necessarily, wouldn't go out of their way maybe to see a contemporary art piece and to just explain it to them and have them have some interest, genuine interest. It's been really cool. Working with Rare has been a, a really an amazing experience. The, the, the people themselves have, are, are, are really amazing. We worked with biologists, archaeologists, uh, cliffologists. Habitat uh, like, ha maintainers. Ha yeah, yeah. so, so we, we've kind of had this education and biology and, and, and nature and uh, we've kind of you know in, in a way have been educating them on, on contemporary art and um, the possibilities of what they can do to, to, to exploit what we're, we're doing they're, they're now they're planning like walks through this um, they they've asked if this can be up longer potentially <laughs> so yeah. you know there's there's been a lot of positives to gain their confidence is really important the first thing 
I think they, they respond to this, uh, what, what, what is an artist going to do? What are you going to do to this area? You know, it's not really supposed to be tampered with. Mm -hmm. We're like, we're, we're here to work with you. We're here to learn. Uh, you tell us what we cannot do as well as can do. And uh, we'll, we'll play by those rules, right? Which is part of, you know, in, in some ways, Andy Goldsworthy would have to, like, come across that too, right? They, 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 artists, uh, all artists have to do that, is, is work with other uh, uh, organizations and institutions, and it becomes part of the problem solving. Mm -hmm. you have to and work. the amount of preparation that we had to do before we could actually start working on the site was months of work in order to gain yeah. their confidence, to, to have them know that we would respect the space. So that was, that was really cool too. The original piece that we're imitating was by the artist Andy Goldsworthy, and it was an archway of uh, woven beach sticks or trees. We chose that piece because I, I think it's one of his more known pieces. There's also this correlation between the more public, which is this, this kind of sculpture, as opposed to the more intimate, which is the root piece. The root piece is inspired by a root piece by Nils Udo. I don't think it has a title. And in his piece, he was working with really sandy soil, and he was exposing the root system of a tree in a very square or rectangular shape that sort of emulates the shape of a painting. And the idea, I think, in his case was to expose a part of nature that we usually don't see, right? An intricate, amazing piece of, of nature that just is not ever usually revealed. So the way that we prepared to do the piece here at Rare was to practice on our cherry tree in our backyard. And uh, we learned a lot by doing that. We learned just how to respect the roots as you're working. And we're sort of working with very, very intricate, small sort of embroidery tools and... Little paint brushes. Paint brushes to basically poke at the soil in such a way that the roots maintain, main, stay intact and then to brush away the soil. And basically, at the end, it will be a very similar scale revelation of a, of a hemlock tree's root system here. And we chose the hemlock tree because it has a really shallow but very intricate root system. And uh, the pieces that we're revealing of the root system are these like gorgeous, like lace-like yellow um, veins, basically. They're just amazing. So a little, a little side note too on the root piece. It's right between two archeological digs that are going on. They found a, a, a 10,000 year old arrowhead on the, on the, on the, on the, path the banks on the way, of, yeah. of the Grand River. So it's kind of, poignant, right? We're kind of like archaeologists when we're mm -hmm. digging this route and that's why we've had to work with the archaeological society because we find anything. Yeah. And the other thing that we thought was interesting too, as just as we've been working, it sort of re it was real, revealed itself to me that one of the pieces in, is really inward and really intimate and another piece is sort of architectural and um, we thought that was a nice duality yeah. that, that happened maybe unconsciously. The people at Rare that have been amazingly generous to us are Laura Robson, who um, set up every meeting that we had with people that we needed to meet with. Peter Kelly, who's a botanist, who took us on a number of walks in order to become more familiar with the environment. John we met Don McDonald, who was an amazingly enthusiastic archeologist who might actually come to help us dig. And um, Susan Wayland was a part of our initial meetings as well. So that was yeah. really great. Just um, whoever was and needed to be involved from where was here. And it was and Holly great. and Brenda. Holly and Brenda as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then in terms of volunteers, we had uh, volunteers who were willing to do anything we asked them to do. <laughs> to trudge like. um, sticks through the forest, um, to carry things on their back. We had um, Elodie helping us and um, Nadine Badron and Raf. I don't know her last name, Navarata, I think. And yeah, it's been, it's been, oh, and- uh, Diane. Diane and- Who, who took a, a little- uh, A little injury to hey. her head <laughs> after collecting it sticks, was, while collecting sticks. She's okay. And, uh, and also um, Liz, who helped me with the, with the root piece yesterday. Just amazing attention to detail. And, and Benny. And Benny has been helping us today. today. It's great. So feel really supported. It's great. <laughs>